There are two main kinds of cervical spinal stenosis, central and foraminal stenosis. Depending on which one you have, you can expect to have very different symptoms, different treatment op options, and different risks to your long-term health. So understanding the difference is very important. Let's get into it. Hello, my name is Dr. Grant Cooper. I'm the co-founder and the co-director of Princeton Spine and Joint Center. Stenosis is a Greek word and it means narrow. Central cervical stenosis is when the spinal column in the cervical spine or neck is narrowed. Foramina is a Latin word meaning a hole or opening. In the spine, the foramina are the holes or spaces where the nerve roots exit the spine. So cervical foraminal stenosis is narrowing where the cervical nerve roots exit the spine. Depending on which type of stenosis you have, there are very different implications. In central cervical stenosis, the major risk is that the spinal cord itself becomes impacted. If this happens, a cervical myelopathy may result. This can be a very dangerous problem in which patients can lose function in their arms, their hands, their legs. They can lose control over their bowel and bladder as well. A cervical myelopathy can present in many ways, but one of the more common presentations is that patients will say they're having trouble with balance and they're also having trouble with fine motor control, such as problems with doing their buttons, or maybe they've noticed uh, difficulty with their handwriting. You know, their, their, their handwriting is getting worse over time. Pain can certainly result from a cervical myelopathy with symptoms such as neck pain, stiffness, or numbness and tingling in the arms. This is in marked distinction to someone with symptoms from cervical foraminal stenosis. Patients with cervical foraminal stenosis uh, would expect to have symptoms that are classic for a pinched nerve. That is classic symptoms like this main feature being neck pain, arm pain, numbness and tingling along a nerve root in the arm and sometimes weakness in the arm. One can certainly have foraminal stenosis on both sides of the neck, but it's more common for patients to present with one-sided symptoms. When it comes to treatment, the two conditions are going to be treated very differently. Treatment for central cervical stenosis will vary greatly depending on the extent of symptoms and the extent of cervical cord compression. In severe cases with lots of cervical compression, sometimes the spinal cord just has to be surgically decompressed because otherwise the patient has too great a risk of becoming paralyzed from the neck down. In less severe cases, the treatment becomes more nuanced. The only way to reverse central stenosis is to surgically decompress the neck. If the stenosis doesn't require that, the best way to slow down the progression of cervical central stenosis is to learn and perform exercises to help take the pressure off the cervical spine. Injections don't have a large role in treating central cervical stenosis, causing a myelopathy. In fact, they really don't have any role at all there. High velocity manipulations to the neck should not be done because the spinal cord is already in such a compromised position and you don't want to take the chance of making that worse, which could be catastrophic. When it comes to cervical pyramidal stenosis, the treatment approach is very different. Physical therapy is still used to help unload the spine. Here though, if the symptoms are significant, an injection can be used under x-ray guidance to remove or reduce the inflammation from around the nerve root. When this is accomplished, exercises can then be used to improve the biomechanics to help prevent a return of the inflammation. When conservative care fa fails, or if there is progressive neurologic deficits like worse weakness, surgical decompression of the foramina can also be performed. It's important to recognize that patients can certainly have both foraminal and central stenosis. I've had lots and lots of patients who come to see me with severe pain from foraminal stenosis but they also have significant cord compression from central stenosis. Now, as a non-surgical specialist, I tell them that I can treat the foraminal stenosis, but unfortunately, nothing that I do is going to be able to reverse the central stenosis. And there's many times where I've gotten the foraminal stenosis symptoms all better, but I still send the patient to the surgeon because the extent of the central stenosis, and after some back and forth and lots of conversations, some of those patients have gone on to surgery for the central stenosis even when the symptoms have been mild or moderate or even completely gone. Central cervical stenosis is one of those very few conditions where you may need to consider surgery even in the absence of symptoms. 
That's a scary prospect, and it's one that needs to be very carefully considered from all angles. But the reality is that sometimes the neck is so compromised that the risk of paralysis is just too real and too imminent to ignore. There are lots of considerations in cases like those, such as the age of the patient, the health of the patient, the extent of the spinal cord compromise, and of course, also the symptoms. For more information on cervical stenosis, please check out our longer form video on cervical stenosis. We'll put the link in the, descri in the description. Thank you as always for watching this video. If you have any questions, uh, if you have any comments, or if you have your own experiences with cervical stenosis, We'd love to hear from you, so please leave us your experiences, your thoughts, your questions in the comment section. Also, please remember to hit the like button uh, for this video and subscribe to our channel to get all the latest information on spine and musculoskeletal issues. Thank you very much.